Welcome back, Rise Up Nation, for another episode of Rise Up in Real Estate. And today we're in installment number three of four of just friends of mine talking about uh, this NAR proposed settlement and what they think the opportunities are and what they think the real scoop is on this. You've heard from uh, Nick Bailey, and you've also heard from Steve Murray. Today, you're going to hear from uh, a great friend of mine, Sammy Knight, who is a, an entrepreneur, broker owner of Remax in um, a lot of places, and he owns some other businesses as well. He's been in business for a long time, just known as a great entrepreneur. I wanted to see his take on what all this means for us on a regular basis and see how it all will shake out in his opinion. So enjoy uh, listening to this interview has already been done, but enjoy listening to Sammy and his perspective. I think he'll gather something great from it. I don't know if he's on there or not, Sammy Knight's on there or not, but I thought it was appropriate to get Sam, get Q's broker owner on the call uh, now to get his opinion because if Q said anything crazy, I want to be able to broker owner to speak up to, but he did, Q didn't. Um, Sammy, Sammy Knight also spoke to us and on my podcast. I should say Monday's version of the podcast probably not going to be as exciting as Survivor Tonight, but Lane Murray, who was on the podcast, will be on the podcast Monday. Deep, 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 fascinating stuff. I couldn't stop talking about it when I got home. So let's tune in this Monday for her. But this guy right here has been a genuine friend of mine for years. He is a teddy bear of a guy, but he also knows exactly how to tell you what to do. It's like a like a big brother to me. He tell me what to do and it doesn't even hurt. You know how that accountability works. What I wanted him on the show for though is because, or for our meeting this morning, is he's a broker owner of a large organization. Q is one of his agents. I didn't even know that. Sammy didn't even tell me that for two or three years when I first knew him. Um, but he's got this guy underneath him and a lot of other successful agents. And what I appreciate about Sammy is that he has also done, and if you read his book or you heard him talk on our podcast, he's also done a lot of other uh, top level business ventures outside of our space. So what I thought would be interesting to get your perspective. Hey, Sammy, it's good to see you. You're looking good. Good to see you as well. Don't forget that vanilla envelope on your visor up there. It might be important. Yeah, that's, uh, that that's the uh, that's what the tax man gave me. I feel like I, I want to keep it above my head, not below my pocket. <laughs> not now, anyway. Sammy, thank you for coming. What I wanted you to share with us today, since you've done so much outside of real estate, and I know you have a tremendously successful property management company. Uh, you've done all of the things, and you've been around for a while. And you know, I love your stories about the branding that you did back in the in the, in the day what i wanted to hear from you though is you are in the middle of a change in a in a profession or an organization in the real estate space a proposed change in how we do business i want to just talk to us a little bit about what your perspective is on that change and maybe if can you relate it to other changes you've been through and what should we be thinking as agents and practitioners every day give us your word oh mighty one <laughs> Well, first off, I want to let y'all know I'm 65 and I've won Survivor. 65 years old, I survived, I will tell you that, through a lot of change over the years. Q, great job. Always an honor to be around Q. I, I had a chance to meet him a long time ago, and I've had some some great young folks in my life that have really pushed me forward. Let me tell you, let me tell you what I see this NAR opportunity as or the change that's about to be embarked on us. I think it's a great opportunity for you to grow. And here's what I mean by that. Over the past many years in real estate space, we've operated almost as a, I want to call it just an order taker. In a lot of instances, you know, house came up for sale, plenty of buyers, interest rates were great. All you had to do was be the first one at the trough with the biggest offer. Today, I think what it affords you the opportunity to do is to build your value proposition. It's why are you good? Why do they need you? What what do you have and what do you offer that others can't? And and this kind of change happens, gosh, I don't know. It's happened to me many times. I, I, I look at things like recessions. When does the wealth come in society after the recession? When does the wealth come after the challenge? I'm gonna I'm gonna use Microsoft as an example, one that's the, the giant behemoth for years, and but they weren't as big as they are today back in the day when the antitrust hit them. And they had to make all these adjustments and changes. Now they're one of the top three 
companies in the world. They're trillion-dollar companies. Back in that day, they were trading at $39 a share. Today, they're trading over 400 a share. Massive, massive growth. So change brings on wealth. It can bring on the other, you know, lack of wealth if you allow it. And it's up to you. But I don't see this NAR adjustment as anything other than a new way to do business. I think we're going to see forms that'll change. I think we're going to have to require different steps be taken. But nobody's really outlined, here's the new rule. I think the government has some decisions they have to make because there's impacts that are potential on things like equal housing and just on and on and on and on and fair trade and so on and so forth. And so, and it's, it's going to take a little time to get through this, but it's all about what you're worth. And each of you are worth a lot. You've worked hard. You've earned it. You deserve it. It's critical. If you're a seller's agent, if you're, if you're out there getting the listing, look, you may have the buyer. And you're going to want to make sure that there's a revenue stream for you with a buyer's agent. So it's all about how you sell it, too. So seller's agents, I think this is going to put some okay. pressure on the seller's agent to okay. make sure okay. that okay. they, oops, I hear somebody, uh, but the seller's agent to make sure that they're covering all the bases with the seller. Um, I believe it's going to have an impact on MLSs. Um I, I don't want to say it's a negative impact, but I think it's going to have an impact. But at the end of the day, I see this as very positive change. It's it's something that's going to afford you the opportunity to make more money than you've ever made. I, I, I assure you of that. But you got to do like you said just a moment ago. You got to roll your sleeves up, do your job, show your value, and go to work. And if you're not willing to do those things, You'll be passed by, but that goes with anything. If you don't, if you don't lean in, the world passes you up. So that's almost, kind of what I see. Yeah. So it's almost like this is a in both of your perspectives. It's been interesting to hear you talk. That it's almost like a uh, it's a favor that we didn't realize we needed. It's gonna the, on the other side of this is is uh, success, wealth. Uh, prosperity, especially for the full-time people. I know that's what you have in your organization there, and uh, I appreciate your perspective. Any last words of wisdom for us for you get back to the tax office, Sammy? Yeah. Yeah. No, I've already I've already got the hit. I just I'm riding this around, so I you know it's kind of like when you buy a bunch of stock, you get the stock certificate, you kind of hold it close. So I feel like I'm buying stock in the government every time I have to pay my taxes. So. It's not, it's not worth a lot, but I'm buying stock in it. Now, I, I can't emphasize enough to look. And I, look, I've been through, I've been in business for 45 years. I've run large businesses, large companies, and sales, marketing, operations, finance, you name it, I've run them all. And at the end of the day, if you'll dig just a little bit deeper, I promise you, you're going to rise a whole lot higher. you got to roll your sleeves up, embrace this change, because the victory is just on the other side of it. If you don't do that, you're going to watch people pass you by. Yeah, thank you, Sammy. I appreciate it. What I appreciate most is that I text you after we hadn't really talked for a little while, and your, your answer was yes. Not even when is it, how long do I need to do it? I, when I said, can you help our folks, you just said yes. And I appreciate that. We love you. Give Sammy a hand. Thank you, Sammy. For the back. Thank you. all you Great all. honor. Well, hey, that's a wrap, folks. Thank you so much for listening to Rise Up in Real Estate. If you liked hanging out with us today, please find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Rise Up in Real Estate. Also, follow us right now on your favorite podcast host to hear more episodes. We really appreciate you spending some of your time with us. And until next time, let's do each other a favor and all help each other rise up. Rise up.